Hey, what's going on, everybody, man? Just feel like the Lord strongly put this on my heart to share. So, in Genesis 6, you know, we read about Noah, right? But also we read about how at this point in the beginning, you know, towards the beginning, not too, this is like a couple thousand years after everything that happened with uh, Adam and Eve. So at this point, the earth is corrupt, right? The earth is corrupt. The Bible talks about the sons of God seeing that the daughters of man were beautiful and, you know, slept with them. And the Bible talks about in Genesis 6, uh, Genesis 6 the Nephilim being on the earth in those days um, and giants and mighty men of, uh, of old, of uh, great renown. Now, a lot of the church... We can dismiss that and say, oh, it, the Bible ain't talking about like giants, like people like Hercules and stuff like that. We can try to dismiss it. The point I'm getting at, I feel like what the Lord is putting on my heart this morning is Noah was alive doing all that craziness. We can say today is the darkest that has ever been. Well, Try being alive during a time where it's giants walking around, fallen angels sleeping with women and whatever other abominations was going on in that day and that hour. Who knows what experiments, what, who knows all that they were doing? But we do know in Genesis 6, it says that all mankind's thoughts were evil con like continuously. It was just wicked, right? But in Genesis 6, it says... Noah was a righteous and blameless man. So in the middle of a wicked culture that I believe was worse then, I believe we are headed there, but I don't think we quite, quite, quite got there yet. And don't get me wrong, it's, it's bad out there, but I, I feel like <laughs> we can make an argument that Noah had it worse. And here's a man in the middle of all of this and yet he was a righteous man. He was a blameless man. It says in Genesis 6 that Noah found favor in the, in the eyes of God. And we know the story. God instructed Noah to build an ark. Right? And for him and his sons and his son's wife and Noah's wife. Right? So my question for us today, church, what's our excuse to be, to find favor uh in God's sight. What's our excuse today to live as righteous men and women? What's our excuse, church? Noah did it. Noah didn't have the Bible, right? And us today, church, Jesus left us the Holy Spirit. So we got the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, <clears throat> which yes, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for every believer. Yep, I'm going there. It's for every believer. Yes. Do we receive the Spirit of God upon salvation? Absolutely. But being filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit is a big difference. And yeah, can we be saved without speaking in tongues? Yes. But however, it's going to be a lot more difficult to remain on the straight and narrow path without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I know from just experience before being filled and after because like now if I'm at work and a situation happened I could start praying in tongues under my mask and, and like it's instant like I feel like the Lord just come and I have peace you know what I mean <clears throat> versus a situation happened at work and I don't have the um, baptism of the Holy Spirit I'm not saying that if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to automatically sin. I'm not saying that, but it makes a huge difference. But that's for another video. Just wanted to mention that. But I'm, I'm sharing this because we have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We got the Bible, the whole Bible. Noah didn't have that. Now, yeah, God spoke to him. Absolutely. And I'm not you know, downplaying that whatsoever. But the point of this video is if Noah did it, we can do it. 
If Noah did it, we can do it. Go back and read Genesis 6 for yourself, church. Go back and read it. He was a righteous and blameless man in the middle of some chaos. And we can try to downplay Genesis 6 all we want. Oh, man, nah, that's the sons, the sons of, of God is talking about actually normal man. No, those were fallen angels. We let we can quit trying to fill in all our like, you know, trying to make it fit our narrative. No, it was fallen angels that slept with the women. That's that's what it that's what happened. And man, we, we just gotta do better, church. I gotta do better, you know. We gotta live righteous, we gotta live blameless. Noah didn't bow down to culture, neither should we. You know? Neither, neither should we. We shouldn't do it. We need to be firm. We can't fold in this hour. You know, COVID came for the church. It was designed to try to shut us down, man. And we got to stand firm. We got to go and be the light. We got to live in revival, man. Revival is living on fire for the Lord seven days a week. That's what revival is. Revival is being doers of the word. Revival is what Paul said. Don't just be a talker, but we got to live in demonstration power. You know, we got to live so in tune with the Holy Spirit that we prophesy to people that we laying hands on the sick and seeing people recover. And our Sunday morning life need to match the other six days of the week. Our Sunday morning need to match our life in the middle of the night when no one else is looking. What's on our phone screen? What's on our TV screens? What's, what video games are we playing? What music are we listening to? That's revival when everything is centered around God. Revival is when we no longer grieve the Holy Spirit. When we're, when we're not compromising, when we're not allowing just because it's a family member to allowing people to come in our houses and dictate things and going around family and allowing them to extinguish our flame. We got to burn church like Noah. We got to be righteous and blameless in this hour. That's all I got, man. I feel like the Lord strongly put that on my heart. Love y'all, man.